Hey, welcome to Podcasting and Platforms. So on my show, The Chris Spangle Show, and uh, we... Welcome to Podcasting and Platforms. My name is Chris Spangle. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Uh, this conversation was adapted from the We Are Libertarians podcast that I do with Harry Price. Uh, you can hear it on the Chris Spangle Show feed. And we talked a lot about copyright. And I think there's a lot of nuggets in here for you when choosing what kind of music you want to use, when you want to use other people's comments and make reaction videos. And there's a lot of helpful advice through this conversation that we had. It was meant for a broader political audience uh, around um, some discussion, but I think you will find a lot of value in it. So please check it out. Uh, right after these words, you'll hear a little bit from Harry Price and I on copyright and fair use. The first clip I actually have to set up is uh, from a uh, great podcast. I listen to them all, like I listen with their podcast, watch their YouTube channel all the time. It is uh, it does really cool, amazing different stuff. I really discovered him doing when this person was doing uh, what they called like virus discussion or virus discussion, uh, discussion. So they would set up like a virtual environment and talk like, hey, this is what this virus is. This is what it does. Really cool stuff. Um, I, I like to do it, but it's like, you know, it's, you know, it's, but it's not my jam. I like watching it versus just in, sitting there banging my head against the okay, wall. Okay, so this is a YouTube channel or what that talks about viruses? This is, yeah, he does that too, but he does all kinds of different other things. This video that we're going to watching is because of a dust up that happened on X or Twitter. Twitter, it's Twitter. We're not calling it X. Fuck that. <laughs> it's not, it's not Max. It's HBO Max. We're not doing this bullshit. We're going to call it HBO Max and we're going to call it Twitter. And I don't give a shit. I don't care what you want to call it. I'm tired of Icarus flying too close to the sun. Reality will set in and it's going to stop here. It is a tweet. It is Twitter. And take your damn sign down. It's annoying. I'm not an anti Elon person like Harry is. I don't have a knee jerk reaction, but this one annoyed me. And bring back blocking, because there's a lot of people I want to block. I don't want to hear from them. <laughs> Sorry, I was uh, I was waiting for you also to do the Picard speech. The line must be drawn here and now. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I refuse. I will not call it Max. I will not call it X. Stop it. So, so it's so it's a Deer Creek to you. Yes, it's the it's still the it's still the Hoosier Dome to me. Damn it. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. All right. All right. So anyway, so a dust up on Twitter um, happened between uh, Mudahar, a.k.a. some ordinary gamer and um, one of the largest streamers on like out there in the world right now, um, which is XQC. Does a lot of amazing uh, different streams for but a lot of it like gambling and react streams. And the dust up happened, which will show uh, kick up the video is the um, is the reaction to it. So yeah, all, right, I'll get set up. Yeah. all right. Yeah, here we go. Did it? <laughs> Today's video is about a little controversy. Yeah. So okay, who's this guy? This guy, this is Mudahar, aka okay. uh, with his YouTube channel with some some ordinary gamers, which you know, like I said, great pod, like great podcast. Check them out, watch some stuff. We are not going to watch the whole video. I've got some time codes. We're gonna scam, so we'll skip around. I've also lowered the quality down because you know I want you to go on his channel, watch it in full HD and amazing. Also, it's lower space on my hard drive too. Okay. <laughs> I'm All honest, right. you know. <laughs> this Hit play. All right. uh, a little bit of juicy, uh, you know, debate back and forth. Oh, I just noticed, like the me uploading it here to streaming. I can't see the. I don't have no time. Oh no! Do you want to? Do you want to <laughs> pause here and you pull up the YouTube video? Uh, I, wait a minute. Oh, okay, okay. Apparently, okay. I can see it now. No, I have to hover over the dot. See, this he is why we wanted to place. do it with him and I, so we could work out the kinks. You're you're yeah. listening to a pilot, a concept <laughs> episode. Yeah, yeah, concept, concept, behind the scenes. Usually we do this, you know, you know, we do stuff like this without anyone watching. But you know, why do it? You know, why look, do it? No not having our shit together and being unprepared is classic wall. Okay. Right. All right. Let's see. Gotta. Da -da 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 -da. This is working. Right. Wait. 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 Better and e easier in VLC. I will say this. <laughs> so I think I will probably queue them up and like marks and VLC well, for you next take, time. Take, you take it out of StreamYard and then put it into VLC and then pull up the VLC streamer 
nah, and this just will share work. that window. I, I got it. This will work. This is work because I don't, you know, I this is working. I don't want to like sit there and try to share it and then we have to probably I don't know. I don't know what will okay. happen. Let's I just really do this. I really want a cheeseburger right now. You're making I don't know why I'm hungry. Oh, I'm I'm starving. I just did like a 60 minute hit Pilates class and I just Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I only showered and sat down at this desk. I was really hoping you would cancel so I could go get a cheeseburger. Uh, no, we, our rule, our agreement is where we cannot cancel, no matter how much I wanted to cancel last <laughs> night. So I could take a, a Sominex and sleep till three in the afternoon. Mm. I, I did not. That's fine. That's fine. Maybe, you know, we should start, you know, love us. Anyways, I'm going to hit this video so we can get going because I want a cheeseburger now. <laughs> Anyways, back to the video claiming tools then yes i'm going to talk about it anybody that's suing a youtuber i will talk about it because these are insane situations to be getting into life-changing life ruining scenarios in certain cases so this all kind of stemmed from the fact that one creator bub film said lamina spends months researching scripting editing a video just for react streamers to re-upload the entire thing and provide zero input i said shame garbage like this fills the recommendations tab because so yeah, this is what's setting it up. So this this tweet. So basically, what you which we'll sh go show through the video is that a bunch of YouTube and like the whole YouTube space right now is getting filled up with people doing kind of like what we're doing, like reacting to this different content. Right. But it is way they're doing it. Like right now, like yes, I paused it. We shrank the video. We've done the thing, and we aren't watching the whole thing. But like this will show you, like, and we'll get into this dust up that he had with. Like it's I said, clout. It's clout jacking. So mm -hmm. a lot of the. You know, the reason that, like, libertarians interviewed other libertarians was so that, you know, Tom Woods could come on their show when he wasn't, uh, never <clears> mind, <throat> uh, you know, when he when he was respectable. When, uh, right. when all it, that was it, hidden. Right. And then, you know, you you have Tom Woods on so you can clout jack his to raise mm -hmm. your right. So, yep. like, that's that's part of. Like. Joe Rogan has a platform, but there's some podcast in the comedy charts that reviews Joe Rogan podcasts, you know, and they're like number 15 in the charts. And they I don't know what value they actually offer to people. But I would never listen to it because they're not offering the initial source like Lex Friedman. I don't know who Lex Friedman is, but Lex Friedman is able to get all these famous people. Mm -hmm. Um I think Dave Rubin's a great example of this. David Rubin offers absolutely nothing to anyone. <laughs> he is an airhead. He is a clout chaser who uses the clout of people that have achieved something to try and make himself to position himself within a certain space to make money. Uh, I have zero respect for that guy. Right. He and so what a lot of people are doing who. They can't get Mr. Beast on their podcast. They don't have the talent of Mr. Beast. We'll go on and do a reaction video to Mr. Beast to use his algorithm lift and searchability to get eyeballs on their stuff. And it works great, Harry. Oh, so you say we should be watching the Mr. Beast? <laughs> no, I'm, 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 oh, yeah, just I'm just saying, like, with, yeah. I think it's, you know, I love Bub Film's <laughs> original point here because... It, it is really hard to sit down, write a script, mm -hmm. shoot that script, edit that script, mm -hmm. create the right thumbnail, and to build an audience. It, you know, it'll take you 10 hours to make a three-minute little thing that really hits mm -hmm. for people. I talked to a major Instagram influencer. She makes videos that are you know, reach millions of people. She started out small. You know, she spends th three to 10 hours on a 45 second clip, you know, only for mm -hmm. other people to go and click the download tab to steal her shit. Yep. And I just, I think that's just classless to me. So, you know, it, it, it's, it'd be better if people tried to do what Bub Films is doing, saying here, which is spend those months researching, creating value for people as opposed to just, you know, trying to fill the recommendation tab mm -hmm. using the clout of other people who did the work. Yep. Yep. One hundred percent. Yep. So yeah. So now you can actually see, like, oh, so this is what this is going to get into. Oh yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm hitting play.
because it does. Now, there are some creators that are totally okay with reactive content, some that aren't, but of course, the general idea of reactive content, the ones that I've really talked about, is no matter what, if you upload somebody's entire video in full, not only is that incredibly copyright infringing, but because you're stuffing a finite amount of area in the YouTube algorithm and the recommendations engine, you yourself are stifling out other original creators on the platform. Now, I've always maintained that if you are reacting to videos on stream, that's totally okay. I think a lot of people do, especially when you're off on a different platform like Twitch, like Kick, like a Nico Nico TV, like Billy Billy TV, like TikTok Live. But it's when you take that reaction, or sorry, that whole two hour video block, or however long it may be, that contains the entire video you've reacted to, re-upload it to YouTube, title it in the same way, use the same metadata, and then ape on the algorithm. That's where the issue comes out from. So yeah, basically saying everything you just said, boom, it's, yeah, in plain English, just try to get people to understand, like, what the heck is going on? Why are they doing this thing? Yeah, I don't think there should be, like, a law against it or anything like that, but I think a code of ethics will eventually spring up. Like, the written <laughs> word goes back, you know, what, to the 1500s, um, and over time, plagiarism became an unethical thing where, you know... Uh, you can still be a, a blatant plagiarist and a total liar and become president. You didn't go to jail for your plagiarism. Uh, but, you know, back when there was some honor in 1988, your campaign got ended. I'm talking about Joe Biden. Look up his plagiarism scandal. But I think it's a good example, like in colleges, you're not going to go to jail for plagiarism, mm -hmm. which if you don't know that word, that's where you blatantly just take a piece of writing. Like I can't go to... Uh, Jonah Goldberg's a writer that I like reading. I I can't just go copy and paste two paragraphs and say Chris Spangle wrote this. And you really can't even copy and paste. You know, there's limits as to how much you can kind of like highlight, right? Mm -hmm. And there's no rules against it. You're not going to get banned from Substack. You're not going to get put in jail for it. But people within the community self-police and say, you know, you can't just like rip off other people's talents for your own. <laughs> uh, and it's self-policing. It's it's ethics. Right. And uh, I think that'll develop in the video and, and podcasting space is you mm -hmm. you will see like a guy like this who has a platform start to say, look, we need to standardize some ethics as to what you can and can't use of other people like our like we're taking this guy's video right now and trying to add some value to it. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, that's cool. I'm fine with that because mm -hmm. you're kind of promoting me, but you're not ripping me off. Right. So I right. think the Internet age, Harry, part of what I've been thinking a lot about is how new all of this is. Like I was at the fair yesterday and you have you've I assume been to the state fair and in one of the barns back in Pioneer Village, they have mm -hmm. the cabin from 1822. Yes. Right. And they have a new chart where this chart has the seven generations of people that came from the settlers who posted up there in 1821, mm -hmm. going back seven generations. And if you really look at those seven generations going back to 1821, mm -hmm. life through the 60s didn't really change for those people. They they you know, your main form of entertainment was reading a book you know, or maybe going to a movie, you know, or a, a theater show or whatever. Right. Like there. And I think once you get to the boomer generation, maybe Gen the Gen Xers in that chart, the last our generation and the mm -hmm. previous generation, the acceleration of things has massively the Internet has changed everything. Correct. And blown apart the ethics because the world was so much smaller mm -hmm. until the 90s. And we're just figuring a lot of things out right now. Yeah. Yeah. Not, I'll try to like make this point real quick to get back to video. But like the, um, I just was recently had a talk with a friend and he was giving this great story because he was talking to a Mennonite and was talking about like, you know, like you could probably use a car. Why are you using this horse? And he just like, well, I just got to get to town. I'm, I'm going, I'm only going to, into town. I'm not going that far. I could I take it. I take all day that I need to be there. And then the other thing was, it's like, my world is also a lot smaller than your world. So you have to understand like the car has made your world incredibly larger. Like I, go through many towns a day just because I just want to go get milk and I pass three stores because 
I want milk from this store, not milk from that store that's in my town, but just because I want to go there. Because there's other things I could pick up from the other store that I want. And the other thing of when people talk about when the other thing with horses and something like that, which will be as small, is that you can breed your horse. So if you may, so the horse that you have, is, you probably didn't buy it. Probably just been taking care of the descendants of also of the, your great great grandpa's horse because he bought a horse back then, and you've just been keeping up care of the descendants. So you don't have to buy your horse. So. Michael Rose says, "What is almost as bad is people who take." other people's content and pass it off as theirs, but in a different language Oof. from the creators, which I didn't know was going on. Okay, yeah, that sounds awful, but probably ha especially happens in especially like the, because people who speak English and just English, they probably, in, you know, don't know that like they're watching a content or video of someone from a different language and vice versa. Like someone could easily now I'm thinking I may just start jacking the Chris Bangle stuff and just translate it to German and French. <laughs> Go for it. Let's see how we do. I mean, sure, the Parisians will hear it and start writing. Probably. probably. <laughs> Next, you see, decide to clap back and say, I wonder what triggers people like you so much. Revenue share? Audience split? Algorithm? I heard this complaint a million times. And most public figures try to attack it from multiple angles. Now, at this moment in time, nobody's bringing up revenue. I'm just really talking about the impressions, right? Based on the finite recommendations algorithm, if I'm trying to watch videos out of like 12 possible blocks after my first YouTube video, and all of a sudden, my 12 recommended videos, like five of them are reaction videos because I've watched similar content, and obviously the metadata is being aped, that's a problem. That's what people are talking about because it stifles out original creators. That's pretty much it. Now, I really responded back after that by saying, I know you're not the brightest, but I didn't expect you to be this intellectually dishonest. And I pretty much go with the entire statement that I made. I've even said that we've demonized individuals like Jinx back in the day for being a terrible reaction creator. Now, to understand, the reaction history on YouTube has been insane throughout the years. And I'm going to go... So, yeah. So, he goes to different, different examples like that, but like... I but I want you guys to go watch that video, watch his stuff like that. He did research, go like that. It's really cool videos that he does. But like the thing is like with Jinx back in 2017 is that he would le legitimately like what put on like whole videos. So almost like he would put on a, let's just say like a Brian Nichols video and just watch the video with him really small in the corner. Just watch it. A kind of mystery science theater 3000 it. Not even that. It's just more like, oh, darn, man, you got uh, that. Oh, that's the worst. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> Right. No, no added value to it. Just literally yeah. reacting to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, ooh. Yeah. Which like, I can understand like when people were doing that to like big studio trailers, you know, like I haven't seen the trailer yet. We're going to react to this trailer, which, you know, like angry Joe, like I watch angry Joe all the time. I love angry Joe stuff. Uh, Ryan Holt hates angry Joe. I like angry Joe, which he would, they would sit there and do that. Ooh and ah, and then stop and then do the frame breakdown of the whole video. Like, yes, we just watched this, tra this trailer. We're going to ooh and ah, and then we're going to keep going with this thing. So it was like, you know, it's, it's, and it's an amazing time, but because you want to watch it there, but it usually waits, you know, let's a trailer comes out, let everybody watch it, let it get through that thing, then make something like that. And, but, gotcha. but you, yeah. And the other thing that could show is like, yes. So like the revenue share, this is huge. Like, especially right now with ad revenue being basically in the toilet right now for like ads. <laughs> You know, it's, it's brutal. I, yeah, our friend Eric Larson of uh, uh, of uh, I'm, I'm blinking on uh, Paradox. Excuse me. Um, he does a show for Michigan State bat, uh, sports, basically, and they just their their network just folded underneath them. That happened to us at the pat down. Like it just, hey, next week we're folding. So find a new way to host your show. Oof. ad revenue has completely crumbled so you've got mm -hmm. that's why we're so blessed and fortunate to have our patrons mm -hmm. is that we don't have to worry about relying on advertising we mm -hmm. get a little ad revenue um mm -hmm. from obviously the ads that you hear from the spotify ad network mm -hmm. um which basically help pay our bandwidth bill um but it 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 it, it has gone down five times what it was last year so what i could usually count on is a pretty decent check that would be three to five times our streaming cost our, our bandwidth costs is now one to one so it's just that few people mm -hmm. are are advertising yep. yeah yeah and it's yeah it's hitting everything it's that's why like um it's 
if you watch a lot of different like different streamers, the thing that you watch them because they all you know you see more of the other uh, which is like the lower value ad revenue ads people are doing. Um, like like I do one that because uh, we're not going to do an ad for those. I refuse. Like if you did Raid Shadow Legends, you see more of that st- type of like ads could you get through. And um, but yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, Brett. Your website that if you frequent up somebody's website and you like their content, toss them a you know a dollar or something like that in their Patreon or buy a t shirt from them. Five, one yeah, one dollar. I lower one dollar patrons, but we get thirty cents from that. So yeah, yeah. five dollars is is very helpful. Yeah, because yeah, because Patreon takes a fee on that. And then like, which last this week, what is it that it was the whole thing with the whole kerfuffle at Patreon because. They were really slow to start paying people this week. I don't know if you really, that. yeah, yeah. I yeah. got mine, so I'm okay. But <laughs> yeah, I noticed you didn't say anything. I was like, oh, well, maybe it's not because I saw the news report. Like, well, maybe it's not as big, or you know, they only go after certain people. That <laughs> so no the uh, the problem is like if Patreon folded, and I thought about switching Patreon back when you know they were banning people. Um, they've been really decent about that and and kind of taking a different tact, but um. I'd have to get everybody to go re-enter their credit card somewhere else. Right. Yeah. And 25% of them may do it 50%, you know, so we've got that problem at Bob and Tom where I, you know, I'm okay. on outdated technology because I can't lose half my people. Correct. So it's, yeah, that's, that's one of the problems with the sponsorship model is if you want to move somewhere else, it's really difficult. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, and that's the other reason why it keeps uh, fluffing like uh, alpha alpha goog of YouTube. You know, people stay on it because it's it's too hard to move your audience. Right. You know, right. And the people that can and do move the audience, it's like whether you love or hate Stephen Crowder, he, his audience is is able to just move with him everywhere right. he goes, which that is valuable. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I can, you know, so like I said, love or hate him, at least his audience is willing to move. The, with the him. core of it is is have you built a community around your content. One of our big problems was getting banned from Facebook and it kind of killed off our community. So there's not Mm -hmm. as much community around the podcast as there was before Facebook killed off our group, which we just kind of lost connections to all of these people. Mm -hmm. And we have got like 300 people in our new Facebook group, but it's not the 2,500 with half of that being active in the group. And so, you know, people always, when in my podcast consulting business say, well, how do I monetize this? Like you've got to work really hard to build community and connect with your audience, sometimes on a one to one personal level um, through events, through groups, through, you know, Mm -hmm. what you do with low key wall is talk to people and be reliable content. We're going to be here Monday night at 8 8 p.m. and join in and the conversation, you know, but revenue and monetization happens with basically. You have to be consistent so people can rely on you to become you become their habit. Mm -hmm. And then second, you have to uh, offer them friendship. Like, you know, that famous meme of people like sitting next to the sign of people laughing, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's like this is what it's like to listen to a podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, if people have to feel like they're part of a community. And so if you're a habit and they kind of get some friendship from it, then Mm -hmm. they'll be they'll gladly buy products buy t-shirts move with you um and you're never gonna do that if you're ripping off other people's content to kind of bring it back harry correct yeah 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 you're never gonna get that yeah yeah you're just yeah you're just you're chasing after ads so you're just going after big fish and just, or just doing it let me let me say something to christy avery and i feel the live real lives help with community they do but i stopped the fake lives because you could you complained constantly so it, it's been like a year so be quiet Yay, real y- y'all stopped. Y'all could <laughs> bitch so much that I stopped. I, I, I cost myself hundreds of views of my content because you and her wouldn't shut up about it. <laughs> Look at the power of low key. Okay. See, see that no, key holders? The, the, the see power that. of being annoying. See the power we have, key holders? That's the. That's Is what that what you people. call each other? Yeah. That's yeah. Funny. Key holders. Yeah. 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 Uh, we're still we're still workshopping that day. Right now is the you know the in place name is key holders. What else does this fella have to say? <laughs> All right, so they were setting up things. So now we're going to show like I, I fast forwarded to the seven minute marker. So we're going to do like for uh, there's like bad actions of examples and licensing uh, like of people doing like good right in the in the field because like what you did say earlier on, which was 
the video goes into is what they talk about where there's a code of ethics. So like other YouTubers, like copywriting striking another YouTuber is, is very in bad taste. And it can get you shunned from a lot of different like YouTuber communities. Like you sent a copyright strike to someone, you know, unless they're blatantly just going after somebody, like blatantly copywriting you. It's, you know. Yeah, I learned that I have this power at Bob and Tom. So people rip off our content all the time. Mm hmm and uh a comedian i just kind of bulk uh mm -hmm. went through and said hey take this down mm -hmm. and they threatened to remove a couple that i missed an error uh they were like we're gonna remove your channel because of copyright strikes which i was surprised by mm -hmm. so, but i could take it back so it fixed the problem but mm -hmm. YouTube's kind of getting real serious about ripping off other people's content and a creator like this guy or us has the power now mm -hmm. to take your channel if you rip us off too much. Yep, 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 yeah, yeah action transformative content but once you say i'm watching a video i like to my people you have literally admitted that you're not putting a video up for fair use purposes you're not there to comment on it you're not necessarily there to report news you're not there for offering like actual critique commentary you're literally just showing a video you like to your people now i'm gonna just tell you right now we can argue in a similar way uh, another comparison i like the movie hackers i want to show it to my audience let me upload that review onto youtube Oh shit, or not review, that reaction to YouTube. Oh wait, this independent studio called Metro Goldwyn Meyer is now suing me. Oh shit, how could I have avoided this? Now XQC even watched animes like Hunter x Hunter and The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight where Kick Staff had to go in and be like, we just gave you a deal, don't ruin it. Why was that not uploaded to YouTube? Yeah, so yeah, XQC just got, what is it, like became one of the highest <laughs> paid people. In, in the like in, in, in sports for beginning the massive deal for uh, uh with kick was like a hundred which is rumored to be around a hundred million dollars to stream on kick and it was sit there watching the dark night on their platform just watching the video <laughs> just watching the movie in the little screen uh I couldn't imagine having the money of a hundred million dollars and what I could do with content with a hundred million dollars. I know exactly. I wouldn't sit there and watch the dark. Night if I if had, I had another thousand dollars a month, Harry, mm -hmm. I would have a studio. I would have staff. I would have us making like produce TikToks that would teach the history of libertarianism, the history mm -hmm. of political philosophy. I would have us, I would have us doing regular content talking about current events and applying libertarian thinking to it. Mm -hmm. Like if I had a thousand dollars more a month, I would do that. Right. <laughs> I have, I have $1,200 a month right now. And so I can pay for all of our services and do this amount of content. But if I had a hundred million dollars, I would have a studio like MGM creating. I mean, what, why would you just sit there and watch like this is this is like thirteen year old wants to be a pro YouTuber crap. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yep, yep. Larger streamer, larger streamer. Crazy. Yep. Was it because uh, you didn't want to share that with the YouTube Andes, the frogs, or uh, you know maybe it's because there was a big studio stopping it the entire time, and you realized that you couldn't get away with it, and you could have actually faced a lawsuit. XQC's numbers are actually so large that some people, if they were suing him, could consider him a broadcaster at this point, believe it or not. Now, XQC's response to me was, damn, I knew you liked using big words so that people would give your takes more importance. Uh, dog, where did I use a big word here? Okay, let's look through my entire thing. Intellectually, so intellectually, that's six syllables. Inherently, inherently, four syllables. Dog, I'm sorry, it's basic English, okay? We both went to university. You went for chemistry, if I'm not mistaken. I went for computer sciences. We didn't take real English, but at least we know that it's a language that we use. Come on now, stop it. Little brother used <laughs> Reddit is down the hall and to the left. Used a 2017 example where I talk about Jinx. Um, yeah, we talked about why that was demonized back then. And for the large part, people still demonize it now. I'm sure there are some fervent supporters of this behavior, but then again, they don't have actual evidence. They don't have facts. They don't have a cogent point for this. Also, I talked to most of the YouTubers I take big content pieces from and react to. Maybe send Daily Dose of the Internet, a call and compare numbers on uploads and react. Actually, that might be a pretty good idea. But talking to most of the YouTubers isn't exactly a good answer. 
Uh, unless your team is talking to all of them, your team never contacted me for watching any of my videos. Again, I'm not feeling bad about it, but I'm just saying, if you're going to say that you're talking to most, you should try to talk to all. I yeah, so it shows like a lot of the, the, the what is it, like the bad, 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 you know, the, you know, his basically bad faith response to his, to like a, in, to it. But like, like I said, that's the power of like a like XQC has like how many numbers he has. So like I said, not only did he has that hundred million dollar contract with Kick, like it's the fact of how many people actually watch his streams. Like if you get onto his streams on Twitch or Kick, he's got so many people watching him. He's considered a broadcaster, almost a broadcaster at that point, because how many people are watching? Yet he's willing to go through and pull basically reach down, grab someone else's video, and then bring it up there and watch it. And if you said like if he's doing it to actually promote and stuff like that, like actually promote things and help people to like basically like pull other channels up into the stream, that would be okay, you know, or reach out to them like, hey, I would like to do your video and maybe like share some other. Hey, I made this from watching your video. Here's some of the cash for you helping you out. Maybe that would be okay, but you know, that's really happening. So, it's a... yeah, I, I'm, I don't have anything to add to that, surprisingly. That's fine. That's fine. Try to. So yeah. it did so I could scan. I, I think what I ought to do oh, is take XQC's watching of the Dark Knight and then download it and then watch XQC watching the Dark Knight and comment on XQC's commentary. <laughs> That's I think what I'm gonna do. <laughs> it's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna start like just downloading like the Brian Nichols show, re-watching the Brian Nichols show, just comment on it and with, see how see how long it takes to drive over. Can you do it with Reinhold? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and then Brian can watch Reinhold watching Brian and then mm -hmm. comment on Reinhold. That'd be awesome. We just do a whole circle. <laughs> Let's just say they're not on the same side. <laughs> It'd be great. We should do it. It'll be a great week. It'll be a great week. We just we just start a video. I should start a video from low key wall and just like let it go for the entire podcast of the week as we all just make a copy of a copy of a copy. Which would be great. Anyways. Or you know, they may sometimes rise. It really is a, a a throw of the coin, so to speak. Now one could argue nobody would watch this kind of content if it wasn't for a reactive streamer. And this is where we get into situations where I just have to say it, it doesn't matter what the audience in the situation thinks, okay? Because at the end of the day, uploading somebody's entire video onto your channel is very much against the law, against the legal framework of copyright and fair use. Now, when we look at copyright and fair use in the situation... Now, granted, like, uh, Moodhurst, he's, he's, he's in Canada, he's in America's attic, um, and he is... Ta so he's talking about Canadian's law and the United States North. law. Yeah, he's up there. That terrible country up north, which, you know, eventually they'll become just a, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll carve that up. I um, look that we beat them in 1812 uh, yeah. and we shouldn't have let them live. Hey, Manifest Destiny 2.0. That's okay. right. Mm -hmm. We left the white people alone. Let's treat them. <laughs> How about American government treat the Canadians like they treated uh, everybody who wasn't white? <laughs> tell you this will work out that we'll and if we'll just start going north and we on the guys that we're just going to give the land back oh i stop in canada let's just go over canada keep going into russia let's go personally personally honestly like i anyways i don't want to get into that discussion all right let's continue on yes uh, i do have a question before we go like do you also have the ability to pause and watch the video or is that only my control uh i think it's just you awesome Okay, that, but that's not awesome. I was really was hoping like you could like pause, especially if we got to a spot like, hold on, what did you just say in rewind? But uh, that it sucks. But it's fine. I'm gonna show you from these. No, I do have the ability to pause and and all that. Yeah, I just found oh, nice. Out. Nice. Yeah. nice, okay. Nice. Let's all keep right. going. Hey, that's good. Like I said, we're testing out bugs here, so now like I could put a video up, and if he says something weird in rewind, he you know he's got you know he doesn't have to ask. It's Harry, what do you think of the point that he made? Hmm? What the point of what the Stanford right, University? To, back okay? to the video. So there are four factors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe you shouldn't have this power. <laughs> I have too much power. All right. All right, let's get. So he's basically going. He's getting ready to go over like the laws of yeah. fair use. Fair fair use is something that we talk a lot about at Bob and Tom because we use other people's news stories to mm -hmm. generate our content. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've thought a lot about it here too, and looked into it and. 
people misuse fair use. They just sort of say, well, I'm I'm talking about it and tweaking it with my commentary. So that's fair use. That's not exactly what fair use means. So it's kind of good that he's covering exactly what this is. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It beats. Yeah. So, like, if I sat here in my room with my beanie on and just look read New York Times constantly at people, it's different. Judge, judges consider the purpose and character of your use, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount of substantiality, and the effect of the use upon the potential market. All very important. So, for instance, one of them is the transformative character, the factor. Has the material you've taken from the original work been transformed by adding new expression or meaning, new information, aesthetics, insights, and understanding? In a lot of cases, sitting around watching a video and then fucking doing one of these, or, uh, hey boys, I just, uh, I just pinched one off in the old bathroom there, I'll fucking drop some nuclear bombs out if you catch my drift, Oppenheimer at that toilet. That's not exactly informative. <laughs> Oppenheimer the toilet. That's but, funny. Yeah. So what this is comes from. So one of the largest political lefty political streamer, Hassan Anabi, Jank uh, uh, Uger's uh, cousin, right? Mm -hmm. The thing he does, he will put up whole videos of someone's content while sit there eating his cheeky nuggies in his mansion. All right. So this, well, yeah, because the, 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 look, Harry, the problem here is communists. <laughs> you and I both know it. We have the, the, the conservatives were right about the educational system. We've created a generation of communists who think that content creators shouldn't get paid and that they should be able to rip off the hard work of other people. And let me tell you, creating content is actually difficult. It's not working in a coal mine difficult. It's not working as a construction crew on a road difficult. Mm -hmm. But if everybody could be a content creator that got to this guy's level or mm -hmm. I get paid to be me, mm -hmm. people pay me to be Chris Spangle and I get paid well to do that. And it's because I have spent 20 years learning how to, I don't know, create content that other people find interesting or to bring mm -hmm. a unique perspective or to talk without a lot of ums and stutters and be precise in what <laughs> I say and to be funny as I do it. Right. Like right. there, there's a skill set that I have that people pay me for and to rip off that stuff and just say, you know, well, you, you, I don't find you landlord to be a legitimate person. So I'm going to kill you and take your property mm -hmm. because it belongs to the collective or I'm going to steal your content because this it's it's a generation of people who saw nothing wrong with Napster. And as much as I didn't like Metallica back in the day, they did have kind of a point, Harry, that you can't just steal people's content because somebody had to pay. You have no idea how much money it actually takes to create a TV show. You have no idea how much money it takes to create a radio show. You think that it just means that people sit down and cr talk into a microphone. But 50, 60 people work on the radio show that I work for. Mm -hmm. Each one of them needs health insurance. Each one of them has benefits. Each one of them has life insurance and dental insurance and should be paid a fair wage. And the disparity in entertainment of what the top makes and what the bottom makes, I understand why the writers are striking. But all those people should be paid a fair wage. It's it, it, it does suck when people at the top are making millions of dollars and the people at the bottom are making 30000 a year, right? Mm -hmm. But we have a whole generation of people under 40 that think that it's just easy to do all this. And it's not. It takes skill, it takes talent, it takes time, and people should be paid for it. But communism is the problem, Harry. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. They're also raising a group of kids who sit there and watch them continue to do this, and they're like, I can do this too. Yeah, and I think that's cool. Like, I think the the writer strike has, like, broadened this, so now there's, like, a whole bunch of people who are working on independent movies, mm -hmm. and it could be a huge boon to the independent movie industry, right? Like... Mm -hmm. The breakdown, as much as I hate the breakdown of the radio industry, my dream was to do a talk radio show. Like, I I don't know that I'd want to go work for a uh, 
a f- one of the five conglomerates that run radio networks. Why would I want to do that when I could do this my own way? And if I'm good enough, then I can build my audience, right? But it turns out I'm marginal at this. So I've built a marginally good audience, Harry, <laughs> right? You know, it's it's opened up so many new people to do stuff. And I think that's all cool. But, mm-hmm. you know, we really, I think it's just about being a person of honor. Yep. And that's the problem with communists, Harry. They have no honor. <laughs> they think everything is theirs. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, to be fair, nothing was really stolen, you know. Right. Why happy. should why should you know you saw it earlier in the comment? Why should this guy get paid revenue when that guy thinks that he should take the content for the revenue for himself? That guy's a communist. I guarantee it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing with the I think I don't want to go like because we talked about the residual stuff on um, Monday on uh, low key was like the idea of I can understand like the different residuals for like for streaming. But I'm wondering if like once data really comes out, it's like, what if there's the stream services just cost more to run the things and those is check or they're actually are getting screwed or no one's really watching it. Who knows? I pay I just... for bandwidth. So the more people that download the We Are Libertarians podcast or stream it, the mm-hmm. more I have to pay Megaphone. Mm hmm. Right. So at Bob and Tom, we stream to different services. And the more people that listen, the more we have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. And so we run ads on that stuff. I Mm -hmm. run ads on the podcast to pay for that bandwidth. Yes. And, you know, the goal is to make more profit than have your cost. But there's a cost to it. Mm -hmm. It's not as simple as just I think because people can kind of turn on a Twitch stream and can broadcast to Instagram live. They just sort of think like this stuff is cheap, mm-hmm. but a reality TV show will have hundreds of people working on what you think. Uh, oh, there's must be five camera, five people on a camera crew mm-hmm. following a guy on survivor. Well, no, there's like 300 people in the Philippines on the survivor set. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, including the talent, including the, right so yeah, craft none, of this, none of this stuff is free you know and that's yeah. i think you know uh i i was saying well i bought this many books and tad western was like well why didn't you just steal it off of napster i'm like why would i do that to somebody so i think when you make your living the way that i make my living you mm-hmm. you sort of go you know look i'm half happy and i'm comfortable i make right. a middle a middle class lower middle class wage right doing the things that i love get it is not hard it's everything i love but like i could easily just end up selling insurance because the ad market falls through and this thing falls through and then all of a sudden i I have no audience and i'm done right so it's a much riskier proposition with high up rewards but people just sort of i think because we grew up on napster well why don't you just steal that book well Somebody spent the average time to write a book Mm -hmm. is a book is uh, 10 years of a person's life distilled down into three years of writing into a single day where it's published. And what is the 10 years of gathering knowledge and the three years of hard work worth? Right. Mm -hmm. They're gambling. Caleb is gambling. He's been working nonstop on this book. And when it gets released, that time should be worth something Mm -hmm. right and it may be worth something to 50 people or it may be something to ten thousand people or a million people and hopefully it's more right yeah um but uh, i i know i'm rambling but i i want to make one one more point um you know it's it's just sort of changed everything's changed through the pandemic right uh now i'm not gonna make this point let's I'll move on it's okay. not germane it, it's right. interesting but it's not part of the subject we're, we're just <laughs> discussing i'll save it for another day <laughs> see see i have to make sure he's hungry so he wants to end this thing my so wife is making her. like hamburger helper or something downstairs and i'm dying <laughs> right now so uh let's let's try to uh, land this plane in 10 minutes harry Oh, man. All right. Well, I've got, I've got like four more videos to go. No, through. well, we'll just have to do this video. And then we, <laughs> I think what we can do is, you know, maybe that single Saturday we could do two episodes and then make it a bi monthly yeah. show, maybe. Yeah. Consider because yeah, we add in Reinhold and other people to comment in, in here. It's going to add an hour per person. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
probably probably yeah um one of the uh, uh youtubers i watch yeah they get up to what 12 to they did a 20 hour stream for a <laughs> no <laughs> trying to go through video which when i showed it to ryan hall he's like yes let's do that and i'm like no i will Why go not? to sleep what are you doing <laughs> i will go to sleep Come on, baby. What are you doing? Middle of your rant. No, but this is what the end. Like, I've got, there's like a little bit more on here where they just more of a talk about more fair use and give some great examples. But I really did want to touch on that Hassan and Abi one because, like I said, he is one of the largest lefty streamers on Twitch. And he will constantly do that. We'll put your video on and comment about it. And I'm not talking about like studios. It's just like if he wanted to say, like, well, this is where Chris is wrong, he will get up, let your video keep playing where you're sitting there doing all this work describing about India and history. We'll go let his audience watch it on his stream, get the money in the chats for a bit, and then come back to start commenting on it. And yeah, it seems it's acceptable. And Twitch won't do anything about this, you know, because mm. because you have to know he's doing this to sit there, like so. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like a, I don't know. Maybe it's a business. I should probably like get producer Paul to do like just watch his stream and send information to people so they can't copyright strike. It. It's just impossible. Like you know, managing the digital brand for a Heritage Forty Year Hall of Fame radio show with hundreds of a hundred affiliates. Like mm -hmm. you know, with sixty albums worth of material. Mm -hmm. uh, I could have somebody all day sit on YouTube and taking down the stuff that we are entitled to earn revenue on right. that other people steal and upload to YouTube. Mm -hmm. But what's the cost benefit of that, right? Like taking somebody else's material down, isn't it kind of better to maybe leave some of that? So fans yeah. can have access to that material yeah. that you're not going to have time to post as a staff of four in the digital department. Like, right. you know, what's what, or what's the egregious stuff, right. That, that you want to take down. I don't know. Like they're, yeah. And these services are so overwhelmed with mm -hmm. reports that they yes. can't functionally. The algorithms don't effectively police it. Yeah. AI can't do it well. People mm -hmm. can't do it well. Mm -hmm. the, the turnover in compliance departments is huge because people are watching torture videos when mm -hmm. you you know they're watching child yeah, horrific yeah. things going on with children. Like so, people who work at Facebook's reporting department like are traumatized and need yes. PTSD counseling. So yeah. uh, literally. Um, so yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's gotten better, but you as a creator always kind of have to determine, do we want to take this down? Yes. This is egregious. No, let's leave this because it can be helpful in marketing mm -hmm. us. It's, Correct. it's, I don't know. There's, there's no like rule book on it. It's just yeah. your gut feeling. Yeah. Or you're commenting on the video. Hey, thank you for enjoying my work. Can you at least credit my video? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And yeah. people are happy to do that when you ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the other thing, like, like which, which I think um, Facebook does, not Facebook, uh, YouTube dulls out, but very sparingly to only certain big networks is the ability to leave the video up, but you get to claim the ad money on it, the yeah. ad revenue from it, which, you know, they only give that to the big bang players, which also forces small people to want to join up the big, you know, big, you know, uh, network, sorry. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a great thing. So, like, if in, we live stream the radio show and somebody, you know, Tom plays Smoke on the Water, mm -hmm. we don't get our video taken down. We can just send that revenue to the creator or we can mm -hmm. mute it or edit it out, you know. Yep. So I think YouTube and the music industry have kind of reached a point where they realize this isn't going to change. Mm -hmm. And so how can we create tools that enhance mm -hmm. everybody's experience while kind of being fair? I never thought about like the compliance nightmare of your show, especially with the guy just sitting there. Like, oh God, I'm a radio show. I can play music all I want. They're like, Ooh. yeah, well we have, you know, we have uh, licenses for on air mm -hmm. but... and there is no licenses for podcasting. Right. So you no. put, you got to edit that stuff out of a podcast uh, because the copyright law in a podcast, if I started playing music right now, mm -hmm. the last judgment was, that it is considered Napster. So if I were to play copyrighted music in this podcast right now, mm -hmm. um, YouTube has a way to deal with it, which we just talked about. But in podcasting, it's been mm -hmm. ruled by a judge that it's an illegal music download. So that's why you can't use copyrighted music in podcasting. Mm -hmm. um, and they're working on that licensing situation in the future where you mm -hmm. can, I could go and sign up to blanket cover the We Are Libertarians Network podcast so we could play copywritten Ooh. music, right? Oh, that's going to be expensive. Um, but I pay 30 bucks a month. One of my costs is 30 bucks a month to a 
service called podcastmusic.com to allow me to play. You're listening to the We Are Libertarians podcast network. Find all of our shows at wearelibertarians.com. That bed underneath it, this part. So I have to pay 30 bucks a month to be allowed to use that bed music. You know, I paid for this thing. All right, let's get back to some boring subjects. Right, that was created. I paid 150 bucks for that created intro, Mm -hmm. and I don't ever have to pay them another dime for that Mm -hmm. intro, but to use the... That's royalty free. I don't have to pay them every time I play it. I have mm-hmm. to pay them a monthly fee for a blanket license to use that. Right. Um, so that's just another one of those hidden costs of like running a podcast is that you've got that stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's y- y- if you get caught, right? If you get caught playing Led Zeppelin mm-hmm. by somebody, let's I, I, the, they have to police that, right? I can play sure. Led Zeppelin in this podcast all I want. But you've got to catch me to find me. But if you mm-hmm. find me, it can be life ruiningly expensive for Correct. for creating an illegal download in this podcast. Yeah. Hey, but those licensing agents, uh, those people that own the licenses to the music, they pay people to go through and like find these things. Like yeah. Ado- Adobe does. Adobe does this. They hunt. Like I tell people every time, it's like, why why buy the pro when I just get the suit edition? I'm like, Adobe pays people to hunt you that down. There's little watermarks in it, and they find out mm-hmm. they will come after you. Just pay them the money. So if you, I don't know how they do it, but if you, um, it, Apple has a podcast promotional thing. So mm-hmm. you can go to this website and download a promo image mm-hmm. for your podcast or your episode. And if you share that image on social media, you get credit in your podcast rankings Hmm. and i don't know if there's some sort of metadata in that how they track that you know because i'm thinking if i just download it to my computer and upload it to social media you've rewritten kind of some of the metadata but they figured it out right um and it's like like you said there there are people who are hired in cities to go around to various restaurants barber shops Mm -hmm. stores to walk in and listen to the music that is playing in the background mm-hmm. and then ask to see the license for that music. Yep. And yep. ASCAP and BMI hires people to go and bust small business owners mm-hmm. for illegally playing music that they didn't pay a license for. Yep. And that's another little hidden cost that every business owner has to pay mm-hmm. uh, to Sirius XM or to, you know, all different services that run this stuff. Pandora has a service. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like you said, there are compliance officers all around just trying to be mm-hmm. cops. Yep. Yep. They do it to gyms and stuff like that. Like, uh, just say like your local small town gym, you know, like they put like, if you wonder like, why does the music suck at your gym? That's why, that's why they can, yeah. they don't have to pay the little thing. What is it? Uh, I forget what the sticker they have to put on the window is, but yeah, there's a, like a, for, for some of their, like the proof that they have a license. It's on yeah. like, it also happens to karaoke too, like when you can do like karaoke bars, stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was the video I want. I was gonna go to a second one. <laughs> no, <laughs> we'll have one. to we'll have to save it. You know, maybe next time we get together, we do just we plan two episodes and then we can. Yeah. Or may, or maybe we just stick at one episode a month and not get greedy. But I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The next video, like, it's also be good too, because this one is like it's hot. It's really one I really like. Uh, like a lot of people are watching it right now because of what happened in the thing. So um, it won't even be quick. Like if you, you know. <laughs> but and so next week, well, next month, sorry, next month, you'll like it. You'll All right, like it. cool. All right, Harry. Uh, good video. Good discussion. Thanks so much. Love mm-hmm. you. Appreciate you. Uh, appreciate all of you listening to We Are Libertarians uh, and uh, simulcasted on the Chris Spangle Show. We thank you so much. And if you liked it, share it. Don't rip it off. Actually share it yeah. from the service that you're watching on. All right. Thanks so much. We appreciate you. And we'll see you again here on We Are Libertarians. <laughs>